a powerhouse minor solo in position, plus how to follow a chord progression melodically using some Spanish style licks. It's gonna look and sound like this. Okay, close look at the fretboard. Today we're adding another lead guitar trick to your arsenal and unlocking the powerful D minor shape arpeggio. Okay, so we're gonna be soloing over the chord progression A minor, D minor, and E or E dominant seven. So a one, four, five in the key of A minor. All right, to solo over this progression, I'm using that D minor shape arpeggio. That just means I'm taking a D minor chord shape and transposing it up to the key of A minor so that the A note is in the root. Okay, so that's an A minor triad being played with a D minor shape transposed. Okay, so overlapping with that shape, we have this very nifty zippy little arpeggio. All right, very useful for minor soloing. That's gonna be frets nine, 10, eight, 12. Then you can go back. So just practice playing that. If you want to, uh, once you feel like you're really comfortable with that, you can try sweeping it. Using a rest stroke technique, letting the pick just kind of fall down the strings and then switch into an upstroke when you get to the 12th fret of the high E string. And then alternating from there. Okay, very nice Spanish sound in technique. Now this arpeggio is going to overlap with positions of the natural minor scale. I can play it in its C shape position. G, A, then the scale starts again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Those are going to be some powerful notes that you can apply to the key of A minor and a progression like A minor, D minor, and E major, or E dominant seven for extra flavor. Okay, now that we have a sense of how we can utilize this position, let's use it to learn how to solo over top of the progression and target each of the chords. So in my backing track, I have. Okay, so I'm really sticking to those chord tones, highlighting the chord. Uh, let's get that into your ear first, just listen to the licks, that way you can memorize it. Real slow. And once again at full speed. Okay, breaking that up into a couple of parts, we have just the arpeggio, nine, 10, eight, 12, then going back down to 10. Next we're gonna play. All right, so that was a hammer pull. Eight, 10, eight. Then B string 12, back to eight, back to 12, then scaling down. Before finally playing the root and the fifth of the chord. That's gonna be the 10th fret B string, ninth fret of the G string. All right, put all that together, we have. And a little bit faster. And with the backing track. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so there, transition into the D minor chord, the four chord in the key of A minor, I played the exact same lick, but just changed it up a little bit, so that way it's like a call and response. I'm gonna be able to use the exact same solo in position for the one and the four. To change up the lick, I start it with the sweep. All right, which is definitely gonna take some practice, but keep in mind that you can always just use the last note of the sweep instead. So it could just be. Okay, or like I said, alternatively. All right, so I had the sweep, then went up to the 12th fret high E string. Then from there, it's all verbatim. But now I'm gonna go. 8, 10, landing right there on the high E string, the root note of the D minor chord. Okay, so you put those two licks together and you have a nice call and response. And without the backing track, All right, next, I need the transition to the chord E major. So I'm gonna play. Okay, so now, why did I use this note right here? It's going to be a G sharp note. So I'm using that note because it's inside the E major chord. All right, being played here in its A shaped position. Now, even though this is a very common chord change, it's actually a borrowed chord, meaning that it's not built from the notes that are inside the parent scale of the chord progression, which is the A natural minor scale. Okay, so whenever you have a chord that is not diatonic, it's not being uh, drawn from the parent scale, you need to borrow a note from the chord in order to make your solo work melodically. Okay, so once again, I'm playing. I'm still thinking about that A natural minor scale there. But here it comes. The E major chord comes in. I picture that chord played in its A-shaped position. And I find that note right there. G sharp, okay, which is the major third of that chord. Then I can close up shop just by arpeggiating that chord. All right, so that was nine, 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 seven, six, and then back to the root note, A, just as the A minor chord shape comes back in. Okay, put all that together and you have a nice little practice solo. Looks and sounds like this. D minor. Just like that. Okay, so I hope you get something out of this. You have a nice little solo in position. The arpeggios, and then also, adding in the natural minor scale. Into that position. You can use that over the one and the four, just make sure that you're kind of targeting the chord tones, which is why I find that D note just as the D minor chord comes in. Then a troublesome chord, a borrowed shape E major comes in, which means I need to abandon my comfort zone, uh, my safety net, the A natural minor scale, in favor of right there, that chord tone and a very safe, major arpeggio over the E chord, resolving back to the A minor chord. If you want tabs for this lesson, make sure you go to patreon.com slash lessons. There I'm gonna have printable tabs, a guitar pro, and I'm also going to be constructing a sound slice lesson for this uh, tutorial. Until next time, this is Rob coming at you once again from the Jersey Shore saying happy picking.